Hello, my beautiful beloveds. Welcome to this session. This is about tropical and sidereal astrology. Two types of astrology. And I noticed many people, they would phrase this as tropical versus sidereal astrology. I tell you, no. It is not versus. It is and. Tropical and sidereal astrology. And you will understand why I say this as you watch this session. Enjoy. First things first. <laughs> there are two types of astrology. Regardless of time and space, you might have heard, whether you heard or not, no problem, about Babylonian astrology, Indian astrology, Greek, Hellenistic astrology, modern, Western astrology, and so on. These refer to time and space, the types of astrology according to time and space. But regardless of time and space, regardless of when and where there were astrologers studying the nature of the, the sky, Regardless of all of this, there are two types of astrology. Tropical and sidereal. And for some, it is going to... For some, it's been confusing. What's the difference between these two? And some would opt for explaining the difference between these two prior... Sorry, after learning about the nature of certain signs, planets, so on. But no, I prefer to talk about this prior to teaching about the nature of planet signs constellations, because this is a thing. As I said, there are constellations out there in the sky. You can definitely see them at night. Just go outside and you will see them. So it is with planets. You will see them as stars in the night sky. But there is one system of astrology which uses the constellations as constellations. Meaning, this system of astrology looks at the sky, literally looks at the sky and sees, okay, we see the planet Venus. And Venus right now has in her background a certain constellation, let's say the constellation of Taurus or the constellation of Gemini or the constellation of the crab, Cancer known for... Cancer is the Latin name of it, as with many, as with all of them. These are their Latin names, Taurus, Gemini, Sagittarius, Aquarius, Latin names, I'll give you the, the translation for all of them. But with this type of astrology, which counts for constellations, you look at the planet, you see the planet in the sky, and you see the constellation in the background of it. And you say, okay, Venus is in Taurus right now, or Venus is in Gemini, or Venus is in Sagittarius. Or whatever sign, no, not sign, sorry, sorry, I myself got confused here. Whatever constellation is there in the background. Now, constellations will move, meaning with time at the spring equinox, right now, there is not the Aries constellation rising at the spring equinox. Right now, at the moment of the spring equinox, the rising constellation at the eastern horizon is the constellation Aquarius. This is why we are in the age of Aquarius. The constellation which rises at the eastern horizon at the moment of the spring equinox, gives the astrological age. Up until now, we have been in the age of Pisces. 
prior to that, humanity has been in the age of Aries. Prior to that, humanity has been in the age of Taurus, and so on. Those were the constellations rising at the eastern horizon at the moment of the spring equinox. And such an age lasts for 2000 and something years, depending on how big that constellation is. So this is with sidereal astrology. This is the name of the type of astrology which counts, which counts for constellations, not signs. The type of astrology which counts for signs, for zodiac signs, is the tropical astrology. What does this mean? Regardless of which constellation rises at the eastern horizon at the moment of the spring equinox. The tropical astrology will always use the same order. Starting with Aries, the first sign of the natural tropical zodiac, and going Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, the Crab, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. This is the order. And each zodiac sign will have the same number of days and they will describe seasons. Those seasons being counted by the movement of the solstices and equinoxes. As I said, the first zodiac sign, this is the thing, tropical astrology uses signs, zodiac signs. Tropical astrology will not look at the sky and see the moon and which constellation is in the background of it and say, oh, the moon is in Gemini right now. Regardless of what constellation is in the background of the moon or the sun or Venus or whatever planet, the tropical astrology will always have the same order, the same, the same order. And it is calculated in a certain astronomical way because long, long ago, in the true antiquity of humanity, which was buried, books counting for the history of that true antiquity were burned. In that true antiquity of humanity, astrology and astronomy were the same. They were sister sciences. You could not separate them. It's only nowadays that the elites manipulated people into thinking that only astronomy is for real because they don't want people to be aware of the impact that planets have on them. They don't want people to be aware of how much they can manifest using the natural movement of the astrological energies. They don't want people to be aware of how powerful they can become by being aware of why it is that certain things happen in their life. Because you may have a crisis going on and you don't know why, it seems like you haven't done anything to deserve that crisis. And truth is, you haven't. But it's just that Pluto is transiting now a certain aspect of your natural horoscope, of your non-natural, of your native, of your birth horoscope. So this is why people have been trained into thinking that astrology is just woo-woo. It's not. It's literally a science telling you why it is that certain things are happening. Because once again, certain living beings 
are moving in the sky and the sky is not just above, the sky is also below. are revolving around our realm of existence and this is what happens. Gaia herself revolves around the sun and she herself, I tell you, there is humanity on Venus. Gaia herself has similar impact for those people living on Venus. She herself is a star on their sky. But coming back to tropical astrology, <laughs> tropical astrology derives from a time when sidereal astrology and tropical astrology were the same, meaning at the eastern horizon there was the Aries constellation rising. And from that point, they counted the natural order of the signs. Starting with Aries, as I said. And I told you that the seasons, the astrological seasons, as per the tropical astrology, are counted by the natural events which happen between Gaia and the Sun, meaning the solstices and the equinoxes. Between a solstice and an equinox, there are three signs. The first three signs happen between the spring equinox and the summer solstice, meaning Aries, Taurus, and Gemini. Then, from the summer solstice to the uh, I was about to say winter, to the autumn equinox. And I am talking right now about how it is like for the northern hemisphere. For the southern hemisphere, it's, it's the mirror of this. Now, in the northern hemisphere, from the summer solstice to the autumn equinox, there are another three signs. And those are the crab, Leo, the lion, and Virgo, the maiden. Each of them have the same number of days. Then from the, the autumn equinox to the winter solstice, another three signs. And from the winter solstice to the spring equinox, another three signs. The last six signs being Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, from, as I said, the, the autumn equinox to the winter solstice. And from the winter solstice to the spring equinox, we have Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. And each of these three by three make up a season. From the spring equinox to summer solstice, we have a season which is the astrological spring. From the summer solstice to the autumn equinox, we have another season which is the astrological summer. Autumn equinox, winter solstice, astrological autumn, and winter solstice, spring equinox, astrological winter. This is how it goes. This is how they are. They are, as I said, given by the natural events which are created by the movement of Gaia around the sun. Equinox, solstice, solstice, equinox, and so on. So, the tropical astrology will have this thing that it is somehow more stable if you want to use that word not necessarily that word but it's just i don't know what other words to use here <laughs> because the order is the same every year every time is the same you know that libra season has started because it starts at the moment of the autumn equinox and so on 
while the sidereal astrology, as I told you, literally looks at the sky and sees, okay, the moon in the background right now has this certain constellation of the 12 constellations which form the ecliptic. This is the thing, because there are more constellations in the sky, not just the 12 constellations which became the 12 zodiac signs. There are more constellations in the sky, but the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun, the way we see the sun on the sky, the ecliptic only goes on the road of these 12 constellations. And that is why these are our zodiac constellations. So as I said, there was a time when at the eastern horizon, there was the Aries constellation rising. Literally, that was the time when sidereal and tropical astrology were the same. But since then, constellations have been moving. And at the eastern horizon, at the moment of the spring equinox, there came other constellation, another constellation, which is the Pisces constellation. And there was the Pisces era for humanity. And now we are moving into the age of Aquarius, as I told you. Basically, we are already, because Aquarius is already rising at the horizon, at the spring equinox. But since then, the tropical astrology did not change. It still counts for Aries as the first sign of the zodiac. And once you understand the nature of the signs and the planets, you will understand why it is true. Because both of them are true. Both sidereal and tropical astrology give you correct results. It's not just one. There are many people saying, oh no, it's this one, oh no, it's this one. No, it's both. Sidereal astrology will give you a more cosmic approach because, as I said, it counts for actual constellations. And right there, what I noticed, the energy is more flowing. But with tropical astrology, things are more psychological, more inner-wise, more... With tropical astrology, when you have a crisis, oh, you feel it. You, you really feel it. <laughs> and there are uh, this is the beauty of it because both are real and this would be my advice whenever you approach this whenever you meet an astrologer which uses the tropical system or the sidereal system Please don't, don't go with them like, oh, pff, the other one is better. No, both of them are. And it is, the wisest approach is to look at both of them, actually. <laughs> now, I told you that the tropical astrology is more psychological. And this is, it makes sense because... I told you, the sidereal counts for constellations, actual constellations in the sky. It is more cosmic. The tropical astrology counts for actual seasons. And they extracted the essence of those consciousnesses, which are the constellations we see on the sky. And they made signs, zodiac signs. They literally gave seasons to each ones, to each one of those constellations, of those consciousnesses. And because of this, in tropical astrology, there is something very, should I say, unique? We have modalities 
and elements. Now, I did see that the sidereal astrology borrowed this later on, but this emerged with tropical astrology. What do I mean by elements and signs? You might have heard a fire sign, a water sign, an air sign. Certain zodiac signs are associated with elements and, as I said, nowadays constellations too. Now, in tropical astrology, there are also modalities, meaning a season starts with a sign, so that sign, the people born in the season of, in that part of the season, when, you know, there are the energies of that first sign of the season, they will feel that, they, they will naturally have this energy of, of initiative, of starting things, because their sign is the first sign of a season. People born in the middle of a season, they'll be more stable, more grounded, more, these are the fixed signs of the zodiac. They will not like change that much. They will like to nurture things, to keep things as they are. Because psychologically, think of it. They are born in the middle of a season when there is not that much change in the, the environment around them. So it makes a lot of sense for them to be like that. And then there are the mutable signs. These mutable signs, they are very crazy. <laughs> they like change, but not as much as in terms of initiative as the, the signs which are the first signs of a season. The mutable signs are the last sign of a season. They like change because they are the last sign of a season. And they don't really need to struggle for that change, to impose that change. That change will come anyways, and this is how it goes for them, their nature. Change happens in their life naturally. They don't have to struggle for it, to implement it, to do it. To... It just happens. They love change. They, they love... They just love it. They love variety, they love diversity. <laughs> okay, these are the main differences between sidereal and tropical astrology. As I said, please do not banish any of these two. Please understand that both are equally valuable and equally correct. If you resonate with one more than with the other, very fine. That's what you resonate with. Okay. Again, please do give me feedback for how this session was like, how much you understood. And how much you like it. I love you.